Hi, I'm Jura, the time traveler, and this is my lifestyle time travel blog. Today, we are talking about the history of fountains. The name fountain comes from a Latin word fons, fontis in genitive, which means spring. And first fountains were actually connected to springs. They were either built on top of them or next to them. With the emergence of big cities or big settlements, a problem with water was actually an issue. Where do you get water when you don't have indoor plumbing? So people started to build fountains. So from fountains, water was collected for drinking, for bathing, for washing, for everything actually. Instead of just having running water in the house or having a well next to your house, House, you went to the city or to nearby square and you collected water from there. First fountains were built during the Bronze Age, Aegean Bronze Age, and they come from Crete. So Minoan people during the Bronze Age made first fountains. Actually, one of the first fountains was built in the Palace of Knossos, the Caravanserai of Palace of Knossos, and that was a step fountain. So how it looked like? You'll see the picture here, but I'm going to tell you how. This fountain was actually in some kind of a building and it had steps leading to the water. And the spring was actually beneath the floor of the fountain. Similar fountains were also found on Zakros, that's also on Crete, but there are different types as well. But other types of fountains also existed during the Aegean Bronze Age. A jet fountain was depicted on one fresco in the Palace of Frescos at Knossos, but that wasn't the only type. At Zakros, two water spouts were found and those looked like lion heads. So this is actually another type of early fountain. And using a lion's head as a water spout was pretty popular from the beginning, as it is today, because also Etruscans and Greeks and Romans also used those heads as a decorative moment for a spout. And in ancient Greece, fountains were connected either to springs, so they were directly on top of or next to spring, or they actually were the ending point of an aqueduct. Or water pipes made from terracotta connected spring to the fountain. In ancient Greece, fountains were located on agoras or in sanctuaries or in sacred places. Those fountains on agoras were usually covered by a portico, so sometimes they were called fountain houses. And those fountain houses sometimes had more than one spout. So the water was actually running through those spouts all the time. They didn't have a faucet, so they couldn't actually stop the water, but it was running all the time. And the water was collected in a basin. Nymphaeum was really important in ancient Greece and later on in ancient Rome. And Nymphaeum was actually a grotto spring dedicated to nymphs. In ancient Roman times, nymphaeums looked a bit differently, but we'll talk about that later. And in ancient Greek nymphaeums, also some rituals were conducted. And when spring was not found in a grotto and you wanted to get a nymphaeum, then man-made structures were built resembling natural grottos. And during the Hellenistic period, some changes occurred. First and foremost, now some of the private residences had access to water. More fountains were decorated, so they were not used only as a source of water, but also for artistic expression and sculptures were incorporated in private fountains. And then Romans did something completely revolutionary. Romans were really famous for building aqueducts. And those aqueducts were not limited just uh, to the city of Rome, but to every territory they conquered, they built another aqueduct. So there was no lack of water in Roman cities. And their fountains were not just functional. Only the city of Rome in the third century AD had 11 aqueducts. And in fourth century AD, it had 1,000 
352 fountains or cisterns. So even in the antiquity, the city of Rome was known as the Queen of Water, Roma Regina Aquarum. And those aqueducts were conducting water to public fountains, private fountains, private residences, private and public baths, and monumental fountains. Probably the most numerous fountains in Rome and in Roman Empire were Lacus. And those were public fountains located on the streets of Rome. And Lacus means hollow cavity. And Lacus fountains were actually pretty simple. You have a spout and you have a basin in front of it and the water is constantly running through the spout. And the spout can be ornamental, it can be shaped as a lion's head or head of any other animal or it can be shaped as a human head. And best examples of those fountains were found in Pompeii and Herculanum because they are well preserved after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. So now in Pompeii you have remains of around 40 Lacus fountains. Another type of a Roman fountain is salience, which means jumping or gushing water. Those fountains are usually found inside private gardens and you can also see them in Pompeii. And in the house of the golden bracelet in Pompeii, in the garden of this house, you can find a fountain with 29 water jets. Another type of a Roman fountain is edicula. Edicula, which means a small temple. Maybe one of the best examples for this type of fountain comes from the house of the big fountain in Pompeii. Yes. The fountain was located in the garden of this house and it was pretty big for private garden fountains. It was connected to a wall and it actually had a mosaic all over it. And the decoration of this mosaic was connected to water. The central figure in this fountain was Okeanus, the god of water. Beneath the face of Okeanus was a spout and water was coming from that spout and it was going down the marble steps. In front of those marble steps there was a beautiful bronze sculpture of Cupid with a dolphin. And this fountain also had two masks on both sides of Okeanus and those were theatrical masks in marble. And similar but smaller fountains were found throughout the Pompeii. Now we are talking about one really interesting fountain that was located in the center of Rome. And it was called Meta Sudens. Meta Sudens is a big conical fountain located near Colosseum. Now it's in front of the Ark of Constantine, but that was built several centuries later, so it was not there when the fountain was erected. This fountain was 17 meters high and it had a basin of 16 meters in diameter. Its core was made from brick and concrete and it was lined with marble. And this fountain was actually visible, its remains were visible until the 1936 when Mussolini decided to tear it down in order to build a roundabout. Now let's talk about its name. Meta is conical structure in Circus Hippodrome, around which chariots are turning around. And the fountain, the shape of the fountain resembles that Meta in the circus. And Sudens means sweating. So the water was actually not pouring down, but it was sweating down the sides of this fountain. This fountain was built between 89 and 96 AD by Flavian emperors. And previously on this spot was Meta Sudens from Augustus reign, but it was actually destroyed during the Great Fire during the reign of Emperor Nero. And fountains were not used only for collecting water, for drinking or bathing, but they actually had a really important part in Roman rituals. A good example for this is the fountain of Anna Perena in Rome. It was built around a spring. This fountain was used until the 6th century AD, but during the late antiquity, especially during the late antiquity, it served as a place for magical rituals. 
and fountains were good places to communicate with the dead. So, in this fountain, cursed tablets were placed, also anthropomorphic figures in lead containers. So, by placing cursed tablets and figurines in this fountain, people wanted help from the dead and the gods of underworld to conduct some business in this world. So, who was Anna Perena? Anna Perena was an old Roman deity, the deity of cycle of the year, and she was celebrated on the Eids of March or 15th of March. And that day was the beginning of old Roman lunar year. But probably the most beautiful fountains were nymphelms, Roman nymphelms. Those are monumental fountains with abundance of sculptural representations. Some of them were located in the city of Rome, like Septizodium, that was a monumental fountain built by Septimia Severus near the Circus Maximus, but others were located in the Near East, and Near East was actually really famous for nymphalms, like Antonina Nymphalm in Salagassos in Turkey, or Trion's Nymphalm in Ephesus, and Corinth, Antioch, Constantinople, and other cities in Syria and Jordan had their own nymphalms. And Hadrian was actually one of the first to build nymphalms outside Rome. Emperor Hadrian was famous for his love of art, and that extended to fountains. So, in his villa in Tivoli, one of the best preserved and most exquisite pieces of Roman imperial architecture. We have unique examples of water rock. That villa had the most beautiful gardens, and those gardens were also decorated with pools, grottos, one huge fountain representing the river Nile called Canopy, surrounded by sculptures, and ending in Serapeum on one side, which was also connected to water. It had a garden stadium with its cascade fountain, and probably one of the most interesting pieces of architecture from the Roman period, which is Teatro Maritimo. Teatro Maritimo was a domus located on an island, surrounded by water. Everything was artificial. Water pool was actually artificial. And on this island, Hadrian had library, art galleries, baths, he had domus. He had everything he needed to spend some quiet time when he is tired of his obligations. And this was a brief history of fountains. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, send to all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!